welcome to a very special edition of the Klaus and Q Show here on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus being joined by my tag team partner in this endeavor, Quad L. Edwards Q. Listen, man, they say that um, if it's live, it can't go wrong, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, there's also a tagline that is used in any kind of, I mean, more specifically towards like the wrestling business, but card is subject to change. Uh, we had an idea that we were going to do here tonight live on ON TV. Um, and as things happen, as life happens, you know, a wrench or two gets thrown into work, so we have to call an audible. That's the, the luxury of live television. So uh, we are going to tackle the topic that we advertised here tonight. This is October, and with the month of October, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now, originally, we were going to have a guest who is a breast cancer survivor, was going to be on the show with us here tonight, but as life happens, it threw a curveball, and unfortunately, she was unable to make it to the studio tonight. However, we are still going to shed some light on this because this is the month of October, and yeah, we're coming in uh, j just a handful of days left of the month, but... It is still very important that, because th this time of year, Q, as we move from like October 20th on, a lot of the overall, you know, the overall shift and focus is now on Halloween, okay? Yeah. And make no mistake about it, Halloween is a big deal, and I'm not trying to say that it's not. However, um, it is still the month of October, and I feel like, Something like this, not just for this particular month, but this is a situation that really needs to be in the spotlight and the headlines all year round because those women, not just women, because our research have found that men are also, um, they're not immune to this, you know, wholeheartedly, but uh, primarily, this this is a disease that that attacks women, and for them, whether they are going through the struggle, whether they are going through the fight, or they have uh, they're in remission, or or whatever the case may be, it's still very much in their mind, in their psyche, in their heart. Not just for the month of October, for but all year round. Right, right. right. I mean, the awareness is is just in October for you know us. Right. But the people that's pretty much going through it, they're dealing with it all the time, year round. Uh, you know, whatever type of treatments they got to go through, so the treatments can be draining. Uh, it's, it's, and it's crazy because uh, as I was kind of like studying the topic and everything, and you know, kind of learning a little bit more about uh, uh, breast cancer, it it sucks. I mean, it, it, and it's it's crazy how common it is. You know, for women. For real, you know, we, you and I did our individual research uh, in preparation for the for the show here tonight because I felt like, you know, obviously I don't have any experience with this. Like this is something that has never personally come across my radar. Like I, I don't know or I'm not related to anybody who's had to deal with this. I mean, I know of people who have, but. I'm not related to them. I wasn't personally affected by them. So, right, right. You know, I, I'm, I'm an, I am virtually an outsider looking in. Now, I feel like the emphasis on breast cancer awareness is relatively, like, new. I'm Like, as a kid, I mean, unless it was just one of those things that did not come across my radar, like, I don't remember a whole lot of awareness, anything like the whole pink explosion. Yeah. Susan G. Coleman, you know, like right. none of this stuff was on our radar um, as kids. And there wasn't, I mean, I, I guess I could trace it back maybe the last 15 years or so that I really started noticing this concentrated effort. You started seeing merchandise, t-shirts, sweatshirts, like where we work, they do a big campaign there where right. every year they release a breast cancer awareness type of shirt, hoodie, things of this nature. Proceeds go to the various organizations that, that, that tackle this. But 
Um, it is very common, more common than I ever anticipated. Like it says here in my notes, it is um, currently the most common cancer globally. I mean, when you talk about all, <laughs> number one, how many people are in the world that are fighting some sort of cancer, but to know that the majority of those people are battling breast cancer right. is a staggering number, accounting for 12.5% of all new annual cases. And so, I mean, every year, we're, there, there's still a new, a new not, I don't want to say a new batch of, of women, that's a terrible word, but there is a, a, a new group of them that are finding out that they are now inexplicably in a lot of cases. It doesn't, I mean, some of it is hereditary, obviously, but right, right. you know, other ones are completely taken off guard and they are now literally in the fight of their lives. And about one in eight women in the United States are going to develop an invasive breast cancer over the course of their life. That is crazy. That's insane. And kind of like you said earlier, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't, I, I have not noticed, uh, you know, uh, it, it wasn't big back in, you know, the, the day, you know, I, I know breast cancer was around, but sure. the awareness was not, you know, as, as global as it is now. And, uh, and I didn't, I don't have too many people that's close to me that it doesn't really hit my home or anything like that. But, uh, it's something that, you know, I feel like that we have to not only be aware of it, but to be educated of it, because even doing the notes for tonight, I mean, it's it shows how little I knew about you know this disease and it's definitely something that it impacts communities because people are not only dealing with that they're, they're already dealing with some type of other issue and then to just tack that on on top something that's common like that and it sucks that something as common as breast cancer can be so deadly and yeah. and you know and and, and that's and as I was doing the research, that's the importance of actually getting those mammograms and you know going to get checked out and making sure that everything is all right because catching these things in the early stages that's key makes all the difference <laughs> in the world. Yes, I mean you like during my research, I've gone online and I went to a lot of people had posted their personal stories. I actually you know the the woman that the that was gonna be with us here tonight, like she told me her story. And it's like, her, her survival happened because of early detection. And yep. there's a lot of women that I would imagine, you know, how many of them don't go to the doctor when they, when they discover that there's something not right. feeling right, you know, self-examination is what they call it, right? Yeah. Um, they feel something abnormal in there and you know a lot of them are like Ugh, I don't know if I really want to know but if mm -hmm. you don't know how are you gonna fight it or deal with the doctors or, right you know, you know at, at that point I would imagine um, a lot of soul-searching goes on right yeah 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 because <laughs> One thing we don't like is bad news. Sure. And uh, you know, you go into the doctor and you hear that type of news, and uh, and this is something that I can kind of relate to is because uh, you know my mom dealt with cancer. It wasn't specifically breast cancer, but she did deal with cancer. And uh, actually, hearing the news seemed like that was just that was the stab. That was that first stab right there. Mm -hmm. And and then all, everything else is just that knife getting pushed in. But uh, just hearing that news, we don't want that wound, you know, that stab wound. So a lot of people just say, you know what, I'm just gonna deal with whatever, this pain or whatever I got going on, I'm just gonna deal with it without going to the doctors and without dealing with uh, bad news and all that other stuff. I think I'll be all right. We, we always get into that phase where like, uh, I'll be all right. right, I'll be all right, you know. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing and you know, I'm, I'm not vulnerable, you know. I'll, I'll be okay. I'm strong, right? You know. So sometimes we gotta, we gotta look past, uh, you know, that exterior feeling of, you know, feeling like we can handle the world when uh, things like this happen. Because uh, we 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 gotta have that information. We have to have that education to know how to deal with what we are feeling, you know. Because that pain, it, it can be something that. You don't know what it's, you don't know what it is. We're not trained doctors, 
you know, that self-examination can be very dangerous, you know, and uh, even with the, we, we, we just dealt with COVID and I don't want to get too far off subject. We just dealt with COVID and all this other stuff. Self-examination can be very dangerous because you don't know what it is. You're not educated in that area. You know, you can read as much as you want on, on the internet. A lot of these doctors, they have the equipment to really find out what's going on with your body. And it's important to know early what's going on with your body before something happens. You know, this ties a lot into what we have discussed in previous episodes here where your level of success is going to come by your mindset. Yeah. Um, if you are dealt with the unfortunate news that this is what's happening, like we, yeah. we ran the tests and this, that, and the other thing, this is what we have found you you know we have to come up with a course of action right so, right right um one of two things is going to happen it's either you are going to go into a mindset where um to hell with this and we're going to war and right, right. i mean that's that's <laughs> their approach i you know i've i've read these testimonials and these stories of women who um, you know, kind of laid it all out. Like some of them, very, very descriptive. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they really put their heart and soul into it, their mind, their thought process, everything. One that stands out, and like, I don't know why this particular one had stood out, but she lived in Portland, Oregon. And like, that was her whole mindset. Like, as soon as she went into her doctor, and the doctor said, you have been you are being diagnosed with breast cancer here are your options like immediately she went into this mode where you ain't taking me and mm -hmm. you know i'm not the one that's going to i'm not the one that's i'm not going to be a statistic on the wrong side of the statistics right, right 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 from day one man like that was her whole mindset and we have we have laid out very specific you know, s situations and scenarios where it starts with your mindset. If you go into something with with this thought that I'm going to win, like you are not beating me, mm -hmm. chances are you are going to have a better rate of success. Uh, if you go the polar opposite, yep, um, and you it, look, I'm, and I'm not trying to downplay the fact that getting any kind of news like that is going to be life altering. It's going to rattle you to your core. Right. Nobody is suggesting that that is not a thing. Nobody is, is saying you're not allowed to feel that way. What I would say is you, after that initial shock wears off, because I feel like that's where a lot of it stems yeah. from, right? Because yep. you're like, they don't get past the shock. Right. You're know, like, <laughs> oh my God, uh -huh. what, what do I do now? You have just, you know, pretty much written my death warrant. Yep. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Exactly. It could be, okay, uh, this is what is ahead of us. Yeah, things are not ideal, but this is how we could, you know, could go about it. I feel like this is where another thing that, that we talked about is your support system. Mm -hmm. This is where this becomes crucial because right, right. your support system is going to pick you up, not just initially when you are diagnosed with, with the breast cancer, but during the course of your journey, Yes, the battle, right? Um, if you have to go through like the chemo and, and the radiation and, right, th and things right. of this nature, I would imagine that that's going to mess with your psyche a lot too. This is where your support system comes into play, right? Oh, absolutely. And I, I remember, uh, you know, just taking my mom back and forth to uh, chemotherapy, and she had she got a lot of love from uh, you know some close friends, and and I, and, I, and I always said that circle right there that she had really helped push her through mentally because. The things that she went through before she died, I mean, it was so much to the point where she could have gave up early. <laughs> because I, I'm telling you, when you get that, when you get the news, people are already saying, I give up. Right. You know, people are already giving up. But already having people around you to push you up when you're down, to pull you off that ground when you're down there, man, 
it it means so much, and that's and that's with anything, you know. Because I I know when I when I dealt with the fire, I had a lot of people pulling me up, you know, and I wouldn't I wouldn't allow myself to fall, and that's what everyone have to go through. Everyone have to go through some type of issue in life, and this breast cancer issue was is a big issue. But the key thing is not to give up. You don't have to quit because when you, and it's crazy how percentages change. Right. When you quit, you're already putting a 100% chance on failure. You're putting your 100% chance on death right there. I mean, you're done. You don't wanna, you're not gonna deal with it. But that percentage change when you say, I'm gonna fight for this. I'm gonna fight for my life. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna throw in a towel. I'm gonna allow the people that's around me the right people around me to help lift me up and help carry me over. And it's, and it's gonna take, it's, it's like a group effort, you know. You're, you're running past that finish line together. And, and imagine the time, I, and I love seeing these, these are some of my favorite videos when I see the cancer patients ring the bell. Yeah. When I see, and when I see family and I see close people around them as they ring that bell and they start to cheer that's the people you want around you during the support. Not the people that's there to say, congratulations, you made it. Because you're going to have those too. Right. <laughs> you always, it's always, the congratulations is always greater than the support. Mm -hmm. It's always greater than the support. And I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you I, we've all witnessed that. But do not allow, you know, negative people to help you quit. That's another thing. There's people that they, they might not be saying it. They might not physically say it. But there's people that you cling to that is not for you and will push you to give up. Makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, when you, when you lay a, a scenario out like that, that is one more layer of BS. <laughs> Uh, live TV, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, there is a that is a level of BS that they do not need to deal with at this point. Exactly. Those are the people you need to just kind <laughs> of show to the door and yeah. wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors. Now, you know, you talk about having the mindset that you're giving up. It's too much. I, th this is how I, this is how I'm going to go. Look, I understand that because people deal with bad news incredibly different. It's very individualized. Mm -hmm. But statistically speaking, you know, there are tremendous advances that's happening virtually every day in, in the medical field, especially when you are dealing with things of this nature. And one stat that I found particularly encouraging Q is since 1989, there has been an overall decline of 43% of breast cancer deaths leading up to 2020. Now, this year alone, it is projected that 43,250 women in the United States will die from, from breast cancer. Now, that is an astronomical number by any stretch of the imagination. However, mm -hmm. when they follow that up with, with the fact that the number of deaths associated with breast cancer is on the decline and has been since 1989, I mean, something is happening in the right, right direction. Yep. Here's my thing on it though. When's the last time you heard on a major media outlet whether it be in the newspaper, on television, on the internet, that some significant breakthrough has happened in this fight against breast cancer. I ask that because <laughs> the numbers are telling us that something is happening. Yeah. The numbers are telling us that they have found a way to um, either curb this thing or head it off at the pass. Obviously, the early, early detection thing is gonna mm -hmm. be critical here, but I mean, statistically, it's telling you they're heading in the right direction. Right, But they're right. not broadcasting exactly what is happening. Um, 
I kind of feel like, I mean, if that's the case, fine, because I hate to use this as an example, but like for the longest time when you and I were growing up, this is a sidebar, <laughs> sidebar <laughs> alert. Um, when you and I were growing up, every Labor Day weekend, well, what well, was on TV for like 13 or 14 hours during the course of that weekend, you had the Jerry Lewis telethon mm -hmm. for Muscular Dystrophy Association. Um, huge, huge ordeal. I mean, it was simulcast from different time zones. You had every celebrity under the sun was a part of this thing. And like every year, they topped the year before, the top the year mm -hmm. before, topped the year before. And like we weren't seeing or hearing any results, you know, <laughs> people were still su succumbing to the various aspects of this disease. And then we meet like a Todd Gilbert, who, you, you know, anybody who knows him, you know, a local singer songwriter was part of the Michigan wrestling organization. This is something that he's dealt with his whole life. And he could have very easily been one of those guys that just gives up. Because yep. that's what people pounded into his brain. Give up, you'll never do anything. Mm -hmm. You you were just going to slow. You you were just going to die a very slow death. And he did not. You know there. And, but it wasn't necessarily from the advances in modern medicine. He got his from from yoga from Diamond Dallas Page, like whatever program right. he he, yeah. he enlisted in. Like that was able to strengthen his muscles, and he's able work. to get you know move a lot better than he used to. I mean, he's wrestled of you know a handful of matches. Like that would have never been Jeez. a thing. Right now, right. I say that to say, and I realize it's a really extreme sidebar, but my point is, organizations that have these fundraisers for breast cancer awareness. Now, a lot of legit ones. Mm -hmm. I'm not dis I'm not, not disparaging that at all, but you kind of got to be careful in this day and age right, of who right. you are donating money to to make sure that they are truly on the up and up. Right. Other people will go out there just to look to make a make a buck or or, or whatever. They'll get a handful of shirts or something made that mm -hmm. say something with breast cancer awareness under the guise that hey, this is a fundraiser and, and all this money is going towards research. Exactly. It ain't going to research. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> um, but my my thing is is the doctors obviously are making some strides here. Right. And mm -hmm. the important part is is not the headlines that they're getting. Like the doctor that broke through a huge hurdle in this fight right, could yeah. could have gone on every realm of media and touted his name and they would have erected a statue in his hometown and all this other stuff i don't see any of that happening right right that's not to say that it's not happening but like i'm just not seeing it it's not coming across my radar it seems like that what whatever is happening here Again, from an outsider looking in, it's obviously making some significant strides for the right reasons. They're not doing it for the fame or mm. the notoriety. They are doing yep. it for what it's intended to do, and that's then that's to save pe you know people's lives, right? Yeah, and I think another thing that's that's helping is uh, actually having these awarenesses, you know. And uh, people, I'm sure, you know, probably 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago probably wasn't really thinking about having breast cancer like that, you know, because it wasn't in your face. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's just one month, but actually having some type of awareness is actually, have you know, getting people to actually have those mammograms and getting checked out and getting the early detection because it seemed like that early detection is one of the biggest keys. And I, and I, I was looking at this, it says over three million breast cancer survivors and I said, man, the, the survivors are raising up. There are more than three million breast cancer survivors in the United States alone. Early detection is key as it greatly increases cancer survival rates. With early detection, the five-year survival rate for breast cancer is nearly 100%. It's incredible. That's great news. Yeah. I mean, that early detection right there so I, I believe the awareness is actually getting people um, people are more intentional on getting checked out now
Mm -hmm. So I think that's 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 key along as as well as you know what the doctors are doing behind the scenes. All of that stuff coming together is just I mean it's saving saving lives. Yeah, uh, I mean numbers don't lie here and you know we like for me I went through a number of different websites here you kind of fact checked because you know in this day and age people yeah, double just, check things yeah you, you, I mean you have to <laughs> just to make sure you don't look ridiculous right if right if you're if you're presenting this or not but and uh, you know we will run a time out here momentarily but before we do there's a couple of things I want to say about this um, number one Still, even with with the numbers the way that they are, you know, the numbers of deaths are are coming down. The survival rate is going up. That's obviously what you want to see here. But still, with all with all of that, breast cancer is still the number two um, leading death. Uh, you know, as far as cancers are concerned. Right. Now, I I want to say. <clears throat> a couple of things here. Now, obviously, it's, it might come off to be a little bit weird that, you know, two men are up here to talk about breast cancer. But, like we said earlier, it's not just exclusive to women. And, like, guys, even though our numbers are significantly lower in terms of being diagnosed with breast cancer, it is still very much a real threat. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. If something is not feeling right, you need to go get checked out. And yeah, I mean, it could be that you are met with some unfortunate news, but the earlier you get the news, the better your chance of survival is going to be. The numbers don't lie. I will say that, you know, based on the testimonials that I have read, the people that I do know of that have battled this, have overcome this, they are, without a shadow of a doubt, the strongest people that walk among us. And even though, yeah, it's important to raise awareness for, for something like this, not just for one specific month, but this is something that should be very much um, looked upon and celebrated the whole year round. Because I promise you, um, <clears throat> those who are affected by breast cancer in any way, shape, or form, either directly or indirectly, their awareness to it does not end on October the 31st. Right. That is something that they deal with every day, all year round. So I want to say that um, those of you who are currently battling this, um, if you are in this fight right now, you have our support, you have our admiration, and we wish upon you all the strength that you need to overcome this. There is a support system in place for, for you. If it's not made up of people that you know, there are organizations out in your community that are there to support you, to help you, and to fight alongside you. And uh, for those who have overcome this, the survivors, your strength, your determination, your will was on full display in challenge like probably never before, and here you are. Here you are because you're hearing my voice, you're hearing Q's voice. And that makes you nothing short of an absolute warrior. And you have our respect and admiration. Anything you wanna say before we, we go to time out here? Uh, you know, I, I commend the warriors out there. I mean, uh, the fight is not an easy fight, but it has to be fought. I mean, and giving up, you're just giving up your warrior status. You're giving up life. So just keep pushing and keep moving forward. It's, I mean, just like he said, the numbers don't lie. Early detection, even people who, you know, got detected later on. I mean, it's, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. So do not give up. Keep that warrior spirit alive. And with that, we are going to take a quick time out. We'll be back with more of the Klaus and Q show right after this. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. 
For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And welcome back to the Klaus and Q Show here on ONTV. I am Jason Klaus being joined by Quad L. Edwards and um, spent a significant amount of time here earlier in the program uh, talking about uh, breast cancer. The October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and uh, we felt it was very important to shed our light on that as well. Um, we're going to kind of shift gears here because you know, like we said at the top of the program, anything can happen when you're dealing with live television and sometimes you have to adjust on the fly. That is very much what you are witnessing <laughs> um, in real time. Uh, before we do, though, I want to give a quick shout out. Today is my son's 14th birthday. Oh, so I yeah. wanted to wish my son Austin a very happy birthday. Happy and, birthday, Austin. Yeah, man, 14. 14. I don't remember that age. Yeah, I, well, I don't either. <laughs> well, parts of it, I guess I do. Parts Maybe. of it. Um, listen, you know, you look at the calendar. It is the end of October. We're coming to the end of October. And this coming Monday is, of course, Halloween. So we figured we would spend the next l little bit here of tonight's show to talk about Halloween, what it means to us, uh, our favorite memories, our favorite traditions, costumes, things of this nature, and maybe the current state of Halloween. Now, this is something that uh, those who listen to any of the, of the shows on the PFC Podcast Network, um, the power trip in through the 80s, uh, we discussed Halloween in, in the 1980s, and uh, you know, we went and found a bunch of different websites that deal with retro, with the, you know, everything 80s. And, you you know, you, you compare and contrast to the way things were when we were kids, to the way things are now. And I said on that show um, a couple of weeks back, I don't feel like uh, kids nowadays um, are as excited about Halloween <laughs> as we are. Absolutely not. <laughs> it is a, I mean, it is night and day. And by the way, check out that 80s uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's it's night and day. I mean, it's funny because um, my kids came up to me yesterday and uh, they were like, is today Halloween or is, is when is Halloween? Like, it, it, they, the way they asked me the question, it, it was almost like, if they weren't keeping tabs on it like we were back in the day. Like, I knew exactly when Halloween was, when I needed to go out, what I, what I was wearing. Today it's just, you know, just, we, we, we did a trunk, I'll, I'll tell this a quick story. We did a trunk Side or treat. Bar. We did a trunk <laughs> or treat. <laughs> My kids, we, they went up to, the, to their uh, school, we did a trunk or treat. We actually got there late. We got there really late. And uh, we only had about 20 minutes to go around to each trunk because that's, that's what they're doing now. They're doing the trunk or treat. You know, they, they didn't really have that back in the, right. back in the day, which is another thing. Uh, so they're doing this, the trunk or treat. They go around about 10 trucks. <laughs> 10 trucks go around in a circle. They go around and they collect their candy, and then it's time to go. And the whole experience is over, and the kids were satisfied. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking like, man, me and my wife, we're looking at each other like, man, that was terrible. And uh, the kids are like, yeah, I got to wear, we got to wear our costumes, and that, that, that was cool. And I feel like, man, they are missing out on so much. Had they been <laughs> out on a, like a full-blown tr trick-or-treating thing before? Well, we did, uh, not all my kids. I, I believe about four or five years ago, we did go to a neighborhood, and uh, we went trick-or-treating. We, we did the full time. We weren't. We were on time. We did the full time, and uh, not a lot of houses are 
participating. Yeah. So the neighborhood we went in, you know, we found a house on a the corner, then about five houses down, to the point where we were jumping in and out of the car to drive down to the next house. And I'm in the experience to me, it was just it was not the same. And I remember as a kid, we would my mom would drop us off at the uh, beginning of the neighborhood where the, uh, the, the the main road was, park that car, and we would take that whole neighborhood and come back with pull it, uh, 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 pillowcases yeah. full of candy. Yeah. And it was just a good time. We didn't have to worry about somebody messing it up, you know, because we got a lot of that going on now. It was just a good time. Every house was pretty much decorated and... It's, it's not like that anymore. It's not like that anymore. And like that's one that one aspect that we didn't talk about on on the podcast was the concept of trunk or treat, and how that has been. Um, I don't want to say taking the market share from <laughs> trick or treating, but for the lack of a better term, that's what I'll say. I mean, I understand the concept of it. Yeah. I, and in in some cases, like I get it and because you just don't know right, right. i actually and, agree with it now the, the way they had it set up i believe it was it was it was more safe because you had the you had the police there and they can monitor each vehicle pretty much so i, I believe it's if you want to go the safe route you know i believe that you know trunk or treat is not a bad go you know it's just the execution just got to grow a little bit more yeah I mean, I just felt like, because I'm a traditionalist, anybody that knows me knows, like, I am very stuck on old school tr <laughs> traditions. Um, you know, my kids still go trick-or-treating traditionally, you know. Mm -hmm. and But you're right in the aspect that we are finding, you know, up until last year, less houses are participating. Right, right. And, like, I mean, I... I saw that last year, especially, and I'm like, man, why are there not as many houses lit up? And why are there not as many? Because, I mean, like you said, just about every single house on, the, yeah. on a particular street, like, they were all excited about this stuff, too. Yeah. Um, we grew up in, in Hadley, and Hadley was, I mean, it was big for Halloween. Like, just about every house had a porch light on until they ran out of candy. Yep. So I remember thinking... Because last year I had to leave early because of where we work. We had to get into work or what or what have you. And I remember thinking, man, what has caused people to shy away from the practice of handing out candy? Then I went to the grocery store. And <laughs> I saw, because uh, we hadn't passed out candy in a while because we would take the kids out. Right, right. right. So it just so happened this year, like I was at, I don't know, Meyer or something like that, one of the, one of the stores. Yeah. And like, yeah, they got all the Halloween stuff out. I mean, Christmas is a couple aisles down, but we'll get there oh, another man. day. Um, Early. <laughs> <laughs> but like 22 bucks for a, a bag of That's candy, you know, and I'm like, <clears throat> well, this is part of the problem right here. <laughs> um just just the price of stuff and i can understand where you know it, it's instead of doing something like that you would take that money and invest in your own halloween parties your right own right yep. on the smaller scale you got your trunk or treat things so i mean i totally get it but it, it just it blows my mind when you look at everything as a whole halloween has become a billion dollar industry there are now stores that are open that are exclusively Halloween stores. That is all that they do. Spirit of Halloween. Spirit of Halloween, Halloween USA. Yeah. Um, now, granted, most of them are only open for, what, two, three months. Right. But they make a year's worth of income oh, in that time. So it's crazy to me that the industry as a whole is reaching record profits every single year. Mm -hmm. But the participation <laughs> of said activity, or quote unquote holiday, because a lot of people, this is their holiday. Right, right. This is their Christmas, this is their 4th of July, this is everything rolled up into one. This is their time. Bless your hearts. 
<laughs> I, everybody has their thing, and I, right. I totally get it. Like I enjoy Halloween too, but I mean, some people are just go way over the over, top. Over yeah. the top. Um, like I mean, it's cool to look at, but I'm that's just I don't yeah. have that commitment to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but man, so where is everything going to? I mean, even like haunted houses. Haunted hay rides, oh, yeah. like a few years ago, a handful of years ago, and I realized probably COVID had a huge, you know, huge hand in that. We're still seeing the residual effects of this, right, right. Um, but pre-COVID, like you could not go down an expressway, you could not see anything in print online without some sort of an advertisement for a haunted house. Haunted Hayride, even Cider Mills. Yeah. You haven't really yeah. seen a whole lot of advertising for Cider Mills. So what in the hell is going on right now? Man, it, it's, I believe it's a number of factors. And 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 going back to that candy thing, uh, it's funny because we actually bought candy to donate to that trunk or treat. But since we got there so late, we still had the candy. And my wife, she went and took it back. <laughs> <laughs> You but didn't keep the candy? We did not keep that candy. But uh, I, I believe there's a number of things going on, uh, you know, as far as the decline of Halloween. And uh, I know for me, I, the importance of Halloween for me, I, I was not a big Halloween guy. As every, a lot of people know I, I am a Christian, and people say, well, do Christians even celebrate Halloween? I know, I, I was never a big Halloween guy, you know. I enjoy being with family and going out and collecting candy. That was that was it. And then, you know, we dress up as something something cool. Like I'd be a nice, cool ninja. I've never been a ninja before. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to dress up as one. Halloween is big because we like to be our favorite characters. Right. So we uh we dress up and family get together and we go house to house. I I end up with all of my cousins and everything and we had a blast. And I believe that uh for one, families are not getting together like they used to. Yep. <laughs> and we, that's, we've discussed that yeah, yep. a couple so of times out That's here. one factor. So uh, you, you got that, and then you got all the, the price increase. And I don't know, a, a lot of houses are not participating, not only because of the price of candy and uh, the fact that you're giving it away. Right. Then uh, you have the price of these decorations now are, like, on a rise. And just to get a giant skeleton, you're paying about 60 70 100 bucks yeah. just to put a skeleton. Easy. Just for a couple of weeks or a month or two, you know, it's now I don't think it's to them worth it. And yeah, I know I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I mean, there, there are people that, you know, they would, they don't put up any dirt, any decorations until the night before or the day yeah. before. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, as soon as November first hits, I'm pulling out my Christmas stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Because here's the thing, Q, if I'm going <laughs> to put me. that kind of effort into something, yeah, I want to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> so, hey, I'm one of those long Christmas tree uh, people too. You know, I'll I'll put that sucker out before Thanksgiving. I'll put it. it it'll be out the whole month of November. Listen. <laughs> There is a long-standing rule in my life. That tree goes up on Survivor Series weekend. <laughs> it comes down Royal Rumble weekend. So I want to make sure I enjoy all the all of the effort. And I know that's a sidebar, but um, it, I just I just feel like so much of what made Halloween so special isn't a thing anymore. Right. Right. Um, it. it I, We've laid out a number of different factors on different scenarios. Clearly, I mean, anything that we did when we were kids, just by and large, oh, different. just does not apply to the kids nowadays. Yeah. And it's not for our lack of trying. Right, right. Because, you know, guys like you and guys like me and, and people that are age who have kids, we want to pass on that those those traditions. Yeah. We want to pass on that excitement. Yep. Now, I, when we were kids, we had the, our costumes were nowhere near what they are here, oh, here today. You go look into Spirit Halloween or whatever, oh, these Halloween stories, yeah. and they've got thousands. Anything you want to be, they've got something to make you that happen. You can be a right? bottle of ketchup. You can be a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> That's in there. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it gets pretty elaborate, right? Yeah. When, when we were kids, we talked about this on the podcast. 
There's pictures of it online. Like we had the the plastic jumpsuit, or mm -hmm. you know, and then that the half a mask with the rubber band that <laughs> held it to your head and got entangled in your hair. Yeah. But those were the best costumes. Yeah. He Man was mine. <laughs> I told I told this story on the on the show. Of all the, of everything that I I've ever dressed up, and as as an adult, I have dressed up as some pretty cool things. Um, not in in recent years, but you know, between the ages of we'll say eighteen to thirty, I I dressed up as some pretty cool stuff. But my favorite costume of all time that I ever had, I was, God, I want to say I was like eight years old, and I went as He Man. Now back then. Costumes didn't come with all the cool accessories. Right, right. right. Um, yeah. Yeah, they just didn't. I mean, you may find, like, some cheap plastic, like, I don't even know what. I, it's hard to think back that far back. <laughs> but there were no cool accessories that went with costumes. Whatever was in that box is what that's you what wound you, up with. That's what you get. My father made me a sword out of wood, carved me a sword out, out of wood that looked exactly like He-Man's. Wow. And... I mean, he worked all the time. Like, we r rarely saw him during the week um, because he, he worked all the time. My mom did, too. But somehow or another, he carved out time to make me this sword because he knew how important it was to me. And, dude, That's awesome. I kept that thing for the longest time. <laughs> I mean, years after the wow. fact. The handle wound up breaking off, and I had to get rid of it. But I, I will never forget that. I will never for, for, forget that because of the feeling that I had like wow man like this my dad knew that this costume was that important to me that he yeah. took time when well, he could have been sleeping he could have been working on something else on the house right right um, this wasn't something that he knocked out over the course of a couple hours this took him a while and I'll never forget how happy I was when he gave it to me and like I swear to God I thought that thing would would call down the power of Grayskull <laughs> if, if I stood on top of the mountain that, that was next door, or the hill, rather. But, uh, I mean, as far as that goes, do you have a favorite memory or a costume from, from when you were a kid? I, I do. Um, was it the ninja? It was definitely the ninja. <laughs> I, I, was, I dressed up as a ninja twice. Um, there was a black ninja with, like, gold trimming, and I thought it was, like, so neat. It almost looked like the... Uh, the gold Power Ranger. Okay. They had on Power Rangers. I knew you were gonna say Power Ranger. <laughs> but uh, it, I, I thought it was just so sweet, and uh, it did. Ha it did have a little plastic sword. It ended up breaking. I mean, that thing was as cheap as. I mean, it was real cheap. Mm -hmm. I think it broke that night. <laughs> I, I was hitting trees. I, was, I mean, I was hitting all kind of stuff. But uh, that ninja costume, and I remember it was it was kind of chilly, and I refused to wear a jacket. Because, because I wanted, cover my, up the costume, I, yeah, right? I wanted yeah. my costume to show. And my son actually did the same thing at the trunk or treat. He, uh, he dressed up as, uh, there's a cartoon, Miraculous, could call it Miraculous. We're not going to know what it is. No, but, no uh, <laughs> not a clue. He dressed up as the cat on, the, uh, on that show. And um, he refused to put his coat on. He, and, and you know what? It took me back to that moment. Where I refused to put my coat on, so I allowed him to go out, going out. He, he I, I probably look right? like a bad parent. Yeah, my kid was out there freezing, but yeah, I, <laughs> I let him go out there and show his costume off, you know. <laughs> but uh, those memories are like some, some of the best memories, you know. Uh, <laughs> and another thing, you know, going back to to uh, the kids and 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 their dis is disinterest interest. <laughs> In Halloween. I mean, I'm the one that's got the speech in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It's been a but, long uh, night. <laughs> <laughs> we got to work tonight. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you see, the kids are different now. I mean, uh, we were outdoor kids. Mm -hmm. The kids now that's huge. are indoor kids. Yep. They will be content with going to the mall and uh, collecting candy there. Because <laughs> I know some some malls do the trick or treating thing there. Mm -hmm. As long as they get the candy, go home and play their devices or whatever they want to do at home. That's the age we're living in now. This is an indoor age. And I and I was just talking to somebody. How do you know if uh, your your if uh, where all your friends are? 
you go to the house that got all the bikes on the outside. That's how you know where your friends are. Now they're texting each other and saying, oh, where are you? What, what are you doing? <laughs> Q, you make such a great point here. Uh, we were outdoor kids. <laughs> yeah. That is huge. Like you were just you just re re relaying the mess or the story about your son didn't want to wear his coat. Look, I totally got that. Like as soon as you <laughs> said that, like I, I remember one year in particular, I I went as Bullwinkle, the moose. Oh yeah. And uh, I didn't want to wear my my coat, and I wound up freezing my little tail off. <laughs> um, but. The fact that we spent the majority of our childhoods in the elements, <laughs> cold, warm, rain, sleet, snow, yep. did not matter. Gale force winds, we were just holding on to a tree a little bit tighter. <laughs> um, we were acclimated to the outdoors and yep. to the weather patterns. And you're right, kids nowadays, they just assume stay indoors or stay on their devices and like, I'm sure that's not the case with your kids. Like, my kids are very, very active in yeah. sports and things of this nature. Um, I just, um, I, I wish, I, I wish they were more excited about, I wish they shared our enthusiasm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, now, we just have uh, a few more minutes here, uh, here tonight, but... Uh, real quick, side, real quick, shifting of the gears. Uh, you know, you and I are big wrestling fans. Yes, right? we are. And Halloween goes kind of hand in hand with some of our favorite characters oh, in yeah. in wrestling. Now, you look back over the course of of our fandom. Obviously, take the Undertaker off the table yeah. because obviously he's going to be at the top of the list. But aside from the Undertaker. Who, uh, who would you say is your favorite um, horror-themed characters or gimmicks? Or gotta, scary? Yeah, you know, I, to go back in time a little bit, uh, I was actually a fan of Papa Shango. I knew you were going to say <laughs> Papa Shango. Yep. I was a fan of Papa Shango. He was a cool gimmick. Yeah, yeah. And it don't, I don't think it lasted nearly as long as it should have. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you went away and came back as something else. But, uh, yeah, I was a big fan of Papa Shango. Uh, if you want to talk recent times, you know, we got The Fiend. Mm -hmm. he, uh, Bray Wyatt in general. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, to be honest, Backwoods, Bray Wyatt yeah. was my favorite, favorite Bray Wyatt with the Wyatt family. Mm -hmm. And I believe when you take all the hokey stuff out, you know, all the disappearing and shit. Shooting light. I know Undertaker used to shoot lightning and everything. If you take all the hokey well, stuff, well, the Undertaker. Yeah, you know, he, he can do whatever pass. he wants. Right, right, right. But in the ring, he was a man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's. I think that was the problem with the Fiend. The Fiend was the Fiend, in the ring and outside the ring, and they couldn't book him right. So. Oh, uh, well, they booked him into a corner. Is what happened? Yeah, yeah. So they messed it all. They messed that all up. But I, I want to see Bray as a man, and I and I and I like to see. Uh, the when you think about that Wyatt family. Think about like seeing them outside in like a dark alley or something like that. You, That's all you need. Right. <laughs> you don't need none of the hokey stuff. Just seeing them was scary enough. They don't. They don't even have to put on a costume. They. They look like they just put on their day to day stuff. Right. And it scared the mess out of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll. I'll give you one real quick. Um, and. He could be. I when I first seen this gimmick play out on television, I'm like, holy crap! This looks like a dude that could have been an extra in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, talking about a uh, Demon King Finn mm. Balor, and when he does the makeup and, yeah. and all that stuff with the cool entrance, like that dude is on fire. Um, otherwise, I'm not a fan of Finn Balor, uh, <laughs> but uh, the the demon, yeah, the demon the, Finn the Balor. Incarnation of the demon Kane is Kane another one. Is another one. Yep. Um, the, the original Kane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ripping the door off Hell in the Cell. Yeah. Uh, going back even further, I think of I mean the Wild Samoans. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Kamala, the yep. Missing Link. Miss. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. You know, there's just so many of them. I mean, those are just the ones off the top of my head. Uh, you know, you, just so many crazy you throw mankind characters. In there. Mankind yeah. is a good one. Yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely. Cactus Jack, for yeah. that matter. Yeah. You know, he's very much the psychological part of it, not just what he looks like, but like mankind with the mask and yeah. pulling his hair Sitting out. Sitting in a dark room. Yeah. With the little window light shining in there. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> That's good stuff. Um, as we r wrap up this episode here this week, uh, you know, obviously, we certainly appreciate everybody tuning in as we do each and every time we come on the air here. Uh, we want to wish everybody a, ha a happy and safe Halloween. And uh, whatever you're doing this weekend or on Monday, whatever the case may be, man, a, a Q nailed it earlier. Uh, you know, enjoy the people that you are spending your time with. And that kind of ties in with our what our main event se segment was here this week, yeah. of course, is, you know, being there and supporting those who are battling or who have battled breast cancer. Either way, either side of the coin that, that you focus on, for the love of Pete, I mean, just <laughs> take the time to enjoy the people that you are experiencing your life with. Because something is going to happen throughout, throughout the course of our time here that whether you want to or not is going to be a brutal reminder of how fragile life is and how precious the time that we have with our loved ones are, is. Yep. So no matter what you're doing this weekend for Halloween or uh, tomorrow is a big Michigan, Mi Michigan State football game, like yep. there's a lot of parties going on. Don't let something like a sports game or something like that cause an irreparable rift in between the family dynamic or right, ruin a right. friendship because that happens all the time. Enjoy the people that you're with. Enjoy the people that you are sharing your life with. Yep. Um, every day, man, maximize those minutes. Oh, Any, anything else you want to say before we head, head on out? Uh, yeah. Um, remember, you all, we all fall. We all have we all have stumbles. We all have issues. And things happen. When you fall, make sure you fall on your back because you're forced to look up. Mm. So then you can get back up. Yep. Do not quit. Be motivated. Stay safe. Uh, the trunk or treats and the trick or treat and everything. Stay safe. I mean, don't don't do nothing crazy and don't be around crazy people. Be safe out there. All right, and with that, we certainly appreciate you guys tuning in this week. We will be back here on uh, November the 18th for the next live edition. Uh, for Quadell Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. Go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other. Find a way to make a positive impact in somebody's day. We'll see you right back here next month with the Klaus and Q Show, live on Orion Neighborhood Television.